Welcome back to Joe Stoner Boxing. A lot of people have asked me, what do I think of this um, rumour that Jaya Pattaya floored Tyson Fury during a sparring session and then got sent home? Um, look, I, I don't think it matters. I don't think I don't think it's relevant at all. I don't care about it. Um, I don't I don't put any real stock in it. Uh, because to me, sparring is sparring, sparring is learning, sparring is practice. Um, I always think of one of the Petronellis, Goody Petronelli possibly, was talking about Marvin Hagler once, and he said that Hagler, you know, it wasn't um, uncommon for Hagler to get beaten up in sparring, for Marvin Hagler to get floored. And of course, Hagler was only floored once in his whole career, um, and that was really a slip. It was against one Roldan. So he had this, you know, reputation for having a granite jaw, which he most certainly did have. <laughs> when he swallowed that uppercut from John Mugabe, do you remember that fight? And he just sort of blinked and then went straight at Mugabe. I must have broken Mugabe's heart. Now, Hagler had a great chin, but at times he got flawed in sparring. So what? And if you look at Tyson Fury, he was flawed by Nevin Pykic. I know it was years ago. And he Wilder flawed him four times in three fights. Wilder is really a guy who anyway is about 215 in natural weight. Obviously a very, very sharp hitter with the, the right hand. Um, Fury has never had the greatest chin. His recuperative powers are brilliant and he, he recovers in seconds, whereas it takes other fighters, you know, rounds to get over being flawed. But sparring is, it, it, people put way too much stock in this, way too much. And it might be the best thing that happened to him. <clears throat> um the only sort of alarm bell for me is that Opatia got sent home, supposedly got sent home early. Now, if that's true, I think that's a bad sign. Because if I was in Fury's camp, I'd be saying, he just floored you. Well, you're not going to put up with that, are you? More rounds tomorrow. Because Opatia, he has got a certain menace about him whenever you see him interviewed the look in his eyes you see if you see still photographs of him there was one of him and Tyson Fury and Fury had his arm around him and was smiling and Opatai was just glaring at the camera he had that sort of you know cold-blooded um dead man's eyes look about him and he he looks like a spiteful individual when he gets in that ring and he's extremely skillful as well as having that that real killer instinct like you know, if you remember the lightweight Roberto Duran, an absolutely intimidating, you know, panther-like um, killer. Opatia has a similar sort of vibe about him. A uh, very, very good fighter indeed. And going into camp, his attitude, I think he said it actually, but I fully expect his attitude to be, hey, I'm not here to, I'm nobody's foil, I'm nobody's stooge. I'm here to beat you up. I'm, I'm, I'm here for, for me, not for you, not to help you. I'm here to help me. And that's the way that all great fighters are. I remember Tyson Fury himself when he when he was a, a young man. I think he might have been even been a teenager. You know, he sparred Vladimir Klitschko, and he said he was just another bum in the shower. Yeah, that's the way you've got to be. Errol Spence, when I think he sparred um, Mayweather when he was a young man, he was like, oh, I don't care about Mayweather. You know, I'm here for me. You know, I'm nobody's fool. That's the way you've got to be. You shouldn't fanboy anyone. I mean, you can respect other fighters. Of course, I respect all fighters. I Anyone who gets in the ring and has got the guts to do that, and my God, it's the loneliest place in the world. Um, but if you're a fighter, no, no, you know, it doesn't matter how how much prestige, how much esteem someone is held in. You've got to be the type of guy who goes in there and puts it on them and says, you know, if you want my respect, you better damn well earn it. That's the way to do it. And Opatia strikes me as that type of person. Now, the thing about Fury's current camp I'm still not entirely convinced he goes through with the Usyk fight. I hope I'm wrong. I really want to be wrong. But I think it's 60-40 that he will. But, I, you know, I'm not I'm not entirely convinced. But um, the, there's one thing about that strikes me about Fury is that his, his camp for the Usyk fight is under wraps. There isn't, I know that, you know, it's been revealed about this Opatia thing, but... He's not out on, you know, Twitter or X or whatever the hell he's called nowadays, you know, jabbering on about and talking a lot of crap like he always does. He's not um, spouting nonsense. He, he seems to be getting on with it. And the fact that there is such, you know, sort of radio silence 
can be a very good thing because it means he really, yeah, he's got his nose to the grindstone and he's really given it large to sort of, he, he kind of learned from that Ngannou debacle where he was basically made a fool of, um, escaped against a debutant, escaped with a win, a narrow win against a debutant. And he's probably thinking, oh my God, you know, I need to get in shape here. Now that that's, if that's the case, and I hope it is, because I want to see, I want to see the very best Tyson Fury fight, the very best Usyk and the best man wins. If that's the case, that's great. But, Radio silence can also mean um, things aren't necessarily going that well. And I didn't like the fact that Alpatire was sent home if he was sent home. I, th- I think if he f- did f- floor Fury or beat him up, that's all the more reason to keep him there, not to send him home. Um, now, of course, if if Sugar Hill and Tyson's team wanted Alpatire to do certain things so that they could work on certain things... Um, Okay, that that is a reason to get rid of him because you are when you're a sparring partner, you do have to, you know, you are there to help to help the guy who who you're or you're, who you're supposed to be helping prepare for a certain fight, and therefore you have to do certain things so that he can work on on what needs to be worked on. And if Obatia wasn't playing ball, if he was just walking into that ring and trying to take Tyson's head off with every punch, um, no rhyme or reason, then yeah, okay, maybe he's got to go, but. You need tough sparring to prepare. And if if you think back to something like Ricky Hatton and uh, Pacquiao, which was a disastrous camp, absolutely disastrous camp. Um, Hatton has admitted it. I think he wrote about his book. He said um, he was with Lee Beard one minute and then he was with Mayweather Senior um, the next. And he went into the ring not really knowing what he was doing. And he got starched in a couple of rounds, less less than four minutes. You know, that was a quiet camp. So quiet training camps can work both ways. But I really hope Fury is getting himself in shape, um, physically and mentally. And he has proven in the past, Tyson Fury, that when his back's against the wall, he he'll come out with he'll come out cold bloodedly, with the same sort of intent that Opatia seems to be basking in, and he'll need to against Usyk. Because everyone talks about Usyk being so much smaller. Everyone is smaller than Tyson Fury. He's a very, very big man, except maybe in Ngannou. <laughs> and that's another story. We know that story, don't we? But Usyk's not a small man. He's big enough. You know, it's not all. He hasn't just put on a lot of bulk. He's settled into that heavyweight division, and he is a huge threat, a huge threat to Fury. But if Fury can get himself in shape, he can do some damage to Usyk, He'll probably go to the body. We all know that. There's a big question mark over Usyk's body. Um, and maybe, maybe that's what, you know, obviously Upper Tire is a smaller guy. He's a cruiserweight. He's very, very quick. He, he doesn't really fight like Usyk. But Upper Tire was probably, he, they were probably asking him to ape Usyk's style to some degree. And he perhaps he wasn't doing that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have inside information. But to get back all the way back to the original point of this video, what do I think of Upper Tire flooring fury if that's what happened? I don't think it, it. I don't think it's it's of any interest or any real relevancy whatsoever. I don't think it matters. I think I wouldn't put anywhere near the amount of stock in it that most people are doing. It's it happens in sparring. It happens. It's not that not that important. So anyway, what are your opinions? Do you do you agree with me? Do you differ with me? Which is absolutely fine. Um, comments below. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the like button. And give the old like, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, little old, you know, little one, two. I'll catch you later. Looking forward to reading your comments. And, of course, bye for now.